Hello and welcome to the fifth lesson of this Excel course. I am Sumit Bansal and in this video we will learn how we can manage worksheets in Excel. Let's get started by first understanding how we can navigate through worksheets in Excel. Whenever you open a new workbook, you get a number of sheets here already. If you're using Excel 2010 or 2007, then you would get three sheets. In case of 2010, you only have one sheet and it is by default named as sheet one or sheet one, sheet two and sheet three. For the purpose of this video, I have created this workbook with a lot of sheets so that I can show you how to navigate through these sheets. Now the most simple way to navigate is using a mouse and you can simply click, uh, click on the sheet that you want and just activate it. So this is the easiest way, but it has the limitation that you can only click on sheets which are visible in this bar. If you have a lot of sheets, in this case I have I think 20 or 30 sheets in this workbook, you would have to use this scroller. So you have these green arrows and when you click on it, you can see that it would show you more number of sheets to the right of your sheet. And again, you can click on the left uh, scroller to show you the sheets on the left. So this is again one way where you can change the navigation. If I want to go to sheet number 20, then I can quickly use this and cl uh, click on sheet 20. Another way is just go to this area and right click from your mouse. And as soon as you do this, it would open this work, uh, this dialog box, which says activate and you would have all these sheets here. And you can select the sheet where you want to go and click OK. And it would instantly open that sheet. A third way is using keyboard shortcut control page up and page down. So when you press control key and hit page up, it takes you to the sheet which is left of the current sheet. And if you hit page down, then it takes you to the sheet which is right of your current sheet. And this is a very handy keyboard shortcut so to switch between sheets in Excel. The name sheet one is not very intuitive when you're working with data. Uh, so you can change this name by double clicking on this tab and just typing the name that you want to give it. So for this example, I would say video five demo. And as soon as I click anywhere in this work area, this name gets confirmed. You can also change the color of the tab by go right clicking and going to the tab color option. And here you can select from the existing themes. If you do not like the color, you can go to more colors as well. So for example, let me say if I select this light orange color and when the sheet is selected you can see that there is a light orange gradient but as soon as I click some other sheet it would have a distinct orange color similarly you can give a color to other sheets as well so it's easier for the user to uh, follow because you can say that if I'm talking about sheet orange or if I'm talking about the blue sheet if you want to add a new sheet to this workbook you can simply go and click on this plus icon and as soon as you click on this it would add a sheet to the right of the current sheet which is active so for example in this case if i go and click here then it inserts sheet 24 which is to the right of video 5 demo sheet which was the active sheet and now this has become my active sheet if i want to sh insert another sheet i can simply go and click on this plus icon again and it would insert another sheet keyboard shortcut to insert a sheet would be shift F11 and as soon as you press shift F11 you can see that it has inserted sheet number 26 you can also insert a new sheet by right clicking on any of these tabs and choosing this option insert and as soon as you click on it this opens the insert dialog box and you have this option to insert a sheet now in Excel there are two kinds of sheets one is the worksheet where you have all these cells and rows and columns where you can put your data and one is the chart sheet and a chart sheet is something which contains only a chart so in this case let me insert a worksheet and if I click OK you can again see that it has, it has inserted a sheet here similar to inserting a sheet you can also delete a sheet so to delete a sheet that the easiest way is a right click here and click delete and as soon as you click this option this sheet is gone similarly you can delete multiple sheets another way to delete a sheet would be if you are working on say this sheet which is sheet number 25 I would go to home tab and within cells I have the delete option if I click on it I have this option to delete sheet and as soon as I click on it it deletes the entire worksheet you can also delete multiple sheets if you want so if in this case for example if I want to delete sheet 2 3 and 4 then I would have this she sheet activated I have sheet 2 activated I would press control key on my keyboard and select sheet 3 and sheet 4 and as soon as I do this you can see here in the title bar it says group so it has become a group and I can delete this group I would go and click on any of these sheets it they are already selected I would just right click and say delete and as soon as I say that 
all those three sheets have been deleted. If you have a lot of worksheets, you may want to move or copy a couple of worksheets so that maybe there is a logical flow or a structure to your workbook. So to move your worksheet, the easiest way is to click on the tab, this tab, which you want to move and just drag it to the position where you want to move it. So as soon as you click on it, you can see that the uh, mouse cursor changes. There is a sheet and there is a black arrow pointed down, pointing downwards, which you can see, which moves along with the cursor. And this is the position where it can insert. So for example, if I want to insert this sheet below sheets, uh, before sheet seven, then I would leave the mouse button here. And as soon as I do that, video five demo sheet gets moved to this position. Let me bring it back to the original position. Another way to move this would be to right click here and go to move or copy. And when I click on this, it opens the move or copy dialog box. Now this has three parts to it. The first one is the book name. So for example, here I only have book one, but in case you have more workbooks open, it would also show you the name of those workbooks. And you can also move this sheet to those workbooks. Let me keep this selected as of now. And here I would say, I want to move this sheet before sheet seven. So it says before sheet and I've selected sheet seven. The third option is create a copy. Now Excel can create a copy for you, but since I'm moving a sheet, I do not want to create a copy. I would just want to move this and I would click okay. And as soon as I do this, you can see that before sheet seven, I have this sheet, which is, which is a video five demo. Let me bring it back again. Now in a similar way, you can also copy this sheet. And the only difference here is that you would have to press the control key on your keyboard. And when you press the control key and you click on this sheet using the left mouse button, you can see that now there is a plus sign in the worksheet in the mouse cursor. And now if I move it and place it before sheet seven and leave the mouse button, it would create video five demo two sheet. Since there cannot be two sheets with the same name, it has inserted this two in parentheses. If I create another copy, it would insert three in parentheses. Let me delete this. Another way to copy a sheet would be again to use move or copy dialog box. In this case, let me keep book one selected. I would select sheet seven because I want the copy to be before sheet seven. And here I would select create a copy. And now when I click OK, you can see that it has again created a copy of video five demo two. Let me again delete this. A third and very simple way to copy uh, a sheet is if you do not want it to position before any of the sheets, just simply press control button, click on this and drag it anywhere in this work area and leave it. So as soon as I do this, you can see that this sheet is created right to the to next to this original sheet. And the reason being very simple, when you drag it and you drop it, the black pointing arrow is here. And so it inserts the sheet here. So these are three ways you can use to copy a worksheet in Excel. Suppose you are working with a huge data set, something like this. I have the name of 200 sales rep here, and I have for 24 years data from 1990 to 2014. So you can see that if I have to look at the entire data, I would have to scroll down and to the right. And at the bottom, I also have the total values here for each column. Now, if you're working with this data set, some issues that you might face is that if you have to go to the right and you see here, in this case, you would never be able to identify which row number, which year it is and which sales rep it is until unless you again go back and check that this is 2000 and then you can go back and check the sales rep. This can really impact your productivity. So to make you more efficient, there are some features that Excel has introduced. I would talk about three such features here. The first one is a new window. If you go to view tab, you would find new window option here. What this does is, as the description says, it open a second window for your document so you can work in different places at the same time. And this is exactly what it does. When I click on it, look what happens. As of now, the name is book one dash Excel. Now, when I click on it, there is a book, there is a, a workbook, which is named book one colon two. And there is also a workbook named book one colon one. So what it has done is it has created another workbook with the same number of sheets, exactly the same data. And it has named it book one colon one and book one colon two. And these are not different workbooks. These are the same workbooks. If I make any change to this workbook, it would be reflected in the other one. So for example, let me show you, I would make this, the sh I would change the shade of this to a very dark color. And you can see this is book one colon two in which I have made the change. Now, if I go to book one colon one, 
you can see that the change is reflected here. So these two uh, workbooks are interconnected. When you are done uh, making these changes or doing whatever you want to do, you can simply close this and it would revert back to the name book one with the changes. So for example, a practical use of it would be, I have these two windows open. I would go to arrange all and I would say arrange these windows vertically. If you have more than uh, one, more than these two windows open, that would also get arranged. So you would have to be a bit careful. And now if I click OK, you can see that these two wor uh, workbooks, book one colon one and book one colon two are now arranged vertically. Now I can go to the bottom and see the total window, uh, the total row for say column F. And here I have the values. And now if I have to make any changes, so I would click on this workbook. And if I have to make any change, for example, if I have to make this 1000 and see what happens in column F, as soon as I hit enter, this value changes. So what you are able to do is you're able to make a change at the data, which is above this data, a lot above this data, but you're still able to view the change that happens. So this is a really good tool if you're working with uh, uh, dashboards or if you're working with uh, worksheets or workbooks where the data is spread across worksheets. For example, in this case, I can also go to sheet four, make some changes. And if it is linked to this data somehow, then that change would be reflected. So it makes you more efficient while you're working with a lot of data. Now see what happens when I close this. When I close this, these names would go away and I would only have the book one name. So when I close this, I only have book one, I would maximize the screen and the change there would remain. So you can see I would still have the shading that I did. Another feature that you can use is the split feature. What this does is it would work in a worksheet and it would divide your worksheet into four parts. Let me show you how it works. I would click on split. And as soon as I click on split, you can see that there are these horizontal and vertical line that appears and it divides your worksheet into four parts. The good part is that each of these part can be scrolled separately. So for example, if I want to uh, see what happens with uh, cell sales rep number 47 and I, I have to change these values. So maybe these values are not correct. Maybe this sales rep uh, uh, has maybe forged these values or he has left. I would go to sales rep 47 and now I would come here, click on this pane and scroll down. And you can see that this part is not scrolling. Now when I scroll down and I come to the total part. You can see that now I'm looking at sales rep number 44 to 55 and also the total value. Now I can simply change these values. Maybe I need to just delete these values and I would see how it affects my total. If you are not working with so much data, if you only want uh, say vertical free spans, you do not want this horizontal line, simply click on it and drag this down. And as soon as you do this, that line would go away. Again, you have these two panes and these can be scrolled separately. You can see there are two scroll bars for it and this scroll bar is common. So you can scroll these separately. So this is a really helpful tool if you have a lot of data in the worksheet. Let me again remove this pane as well. The third feature that you can use is the freeze panes option. Let me show you what is there. Freeze panes has three options. First is freeze panes that I would talk about. But let me show you what happens when you click on freeze first column and top row. Let me choose freeze first column. As soon as I do this, I have this data which would remain visible no matter where you go in your worksheet. So what is it has done is it has freezed this column. And now you would know that if I come here, this data point is for sales rep five this data point is for sales rep 19. So you would know this because I freezed it. Similarly, I can go back unfreeze panes and now freeze the top row. And you can see the top row is now freezed. Unfortunately, my data extends to more than one row. But in case you have the headers in top row only, then this is a good option. So let me go back and unfreeze again. Now, for our own data set, we have this, the first column and the headers extend to two rows. I want to freeze these two rows and this column. And if I have to do it, I would have to point my cursor to this cell where on the left, I have the column that I want to freeze and above it are the rows that I want to freeze. And now with my cursor in this cell, I would go and select freeze panes. And as soon as I select this, you can see that there is a line that has appeared. Maybe it's not really visible, but see what happens. If I scroll down this, these two rows are always visible. And now when I scroll to the right, this column is visible. So you would instantly know that this value is for 2002 sales rep 61. This value is for 2011 sales rep 71. So this is a immensely useful feature if you're working with huge amount of data. 
In the final part of this video, I'll show you how to save a workbook. So if you open a workbook, it always has the name book one. But if you want to save it, you would have to go and click on file option and go to save as. So you click on save as and you save it with some name. Uh, in case you have already saved it, then you can simply click on save or use the keyboard shortcut control S. So let me show you what happens when I click on save as. It opens this screen where I need to first select the location. I would select my computer and Second, you need to select the folder. If you do not have the folder here, you can browse and select this folder. I would select desktop because uh, that is the, uh, the path where I usually save my files. Now you can give a name to it. So in this case, I would give the name video five and you can select the file format. In most cases, you would be saving it in Excel workbook format, which is the XLSX format. You can also save it in the macro enabled workbook format, where which is a format which uh, supports macros. Uh, you can also save it in Excel 97 to 2003 workbook. This is a format that is supported by the earlier versions of Excel. And there are some features which is not there in 2003. So if you save it in this mode, it would give you a prompt and ask you if you want to keep those features or not. So now simply select, I would select Excel workbook format and click on save. And you can see now in the title bar, the name changes to video five. Similarly, if you want to open a workbook that is already saved in your system, go and click open. And here again, it shows you the recent workbooks, but you can again uh, select a place in your system or maybe it is on the cloud. I select computer and here again on desktop, I can select all these, any of these files. So this is how you can save a workbook and you can open a new workbook. That's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. Thank you and have a nice day.